Joseph Cowboys in the NFL and former Cowboys and longtime NFL veteran Del Hellestray, part of those three Super Bowl teams in the 90s, joins us also a part of radio talk show in Phoenix on Sikkim 365 Radio. Helly, uh, how long have you actually been in radio? Did you get into that pretty quickly after you retired? You know what? I actually got into it uh, before I retired. Um, as you, you may or may not recall, back in the 90s, I think of the 47 guys on the roster, I think 43 of us had radio shows. <laughs> and I did a radio show with uh, with, with Mark Two and a called Snapper and Pineapple. Um, I was me being a snapper, him being from Hawaii. And uh, it was like about a five-year run where we had a very, very good time. So that kind of whetted my appetite. Well, first of all, that team and the star power and also the, the personalities from you to Pineapple and the former and late great Mark Two and a among others, have you ever seen in all your years – more personalities uh, in many ways than those early 90s to mid-90s Cowboys. Uh, you know what? It, it's, uh, I've, I've looked long and hard, and I have not. It was, it was such a great semblance of not only talented guys, but guys with personality and guys that love the limelight. Um, you know, what people don't understand have never been to Dallas is just how – Cowboys mad the Metroplex is and really the state of Texas but definitely in the Metroplex and you know, like I said I think they could have the equipment managers on and people listen to that radio show no question about it but by the way just as a person who's been in radio for a long time I don't know if Snapper and Pineapple could there could be a better name for for a radio <laughs> show and it makes me glad that ours is much simpler because I like we would think forever and not come up with something that that cool and funny. Uh, Dale, you um, your teams are, are going to be probably in this wave here soon. Where after a while, you know, some of the the guys who who are kind of on the fringe of the Hall of Fame, like Darren Woodson, who who should probably be in, will we'll get in. But what does it mean to you as a cowboy to see the the kind of some of the corrections of like Cliff Harris and and Drew Pearson getting in finally into the Hall of Fame? You know, it's been interesting. Obviously, as I get older, you get to know more and more of these guys. And, and uh, I mean, Drew Pearson uh, is, a, is a friend. And to see what he's gone through and just to, to see that, what it reminded me of is I'd become very good friends over the years with Jerry Kramer, the offensive guard from the Green Bay Packers, who uh, was, for some reason, not elected. Nobody could really tell, tell anybody why. Um, and you just sit there year after year and you get to know these guys and, um, and the further you get away from it as a player, the more people there are that are going to come in and, and, uh, and, and, and want to take a spot. So I think it's great that they're starting to catch up. I also know we've had some debate on, well, how many people is too many? And I said, well, uh, too many is the NBA. Too few is Major League Baseball. I think NFL gets it about just right. Did you have an opportunity to talk to Jerry Kramer after he was uh, uh, announced as, as a Hall of Famer? I I did. I I, I got to know him really well. At, uh, we probably attended eight nine Super Bowls, mm -hmm. working for the same company and and uh, supporting the Wounded Warriors and mm -hmm. um, him and his daughter. Or they're just he's from Idaho. I mean. I cannot like somebody from Idaho. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's just just a great person. And it, it's almost, I don't even know if he could enjoy it as much as, it's almost like a weight is lifted off. Because every year you're wondering, why, well, what didn't I do that these other guys did um, that got them in to the hall? Which obviously, um, was, it was never a goal of mine. I didn't even know there was a hall of fame when I first started playing, but once you start playing, it becomes everybody's goal. Dale, when I was younger, uh, my grandfather told me the only way I would ever have a chance to play football is if I was a, a snapper, deep snapper, long snort snapper, or a kicker. And I failed it across the board. I didn't listen to him, even though he was a very wise man. When did that enter your radar? Well, first of all, I'm embarrassed that you use long snapper and kick in the same sentence. <laughs> Go wash your mouth out with soap. Go wash your mouth out with soap for crying out loud. I love it. Um, <laughs> no, I. Uh, it's interesting. I was the only in our Pop Warner 
eight-year-old league, I was the only quarterback, middle linebacker, long snapper, combo guy. <laughs> and uh, our coach just said, hey, bend over and throw a pass between your legs. And honest, honestly, it's the only coaching I ever had. Um, I just started doing it. Um, you know, offensive linemen, long snappers, two of the positions that have the least amount of ego because the only time anybody ever goes, hey, who's a long snapper? Is, you know, the ball skips back there or something goes wrong. Um, so it's really unheralded. But, you know, I got to tell you, from my, I was telling the story on our radio show last week. I showed up to my first mini camp in Buffalo. Um, I was drafted as an offensive tackle, also a very good long snapper. Um, we go through a whole mini camp and I could like go to the offensive line coach and say, when are we going to, when are we going to long snap? He goes, Oh, we'll probably get to that halfway through training camp. <laughs> there wasn't a special teams coach. Our punt team coach was a running, running back coach. Um, it was like, yeah, Oh, Hey, you, you, you can snap. Okay. Nowadays, you know, if you're a high school kid and you're 210, 215, 220 pounds, you can, uh, you can get a full ride scholarship. And get your education before just snapping the ball. Dale, what's the biggest difference you see between your Cowboys and these Cowboys that they have not been able to wrap their arms around? Well, <laughs> you know, having uh, been blessed with the opportunity to be around the practice facility a few times, more than a few times in the stadium. Um, you know, my humble opinion, none of it speaks of football. Um, none of it speaks of grittiness and toughness and, and fighting through things. Everything is, you know, gold gold and silver and, you know, windows and pretty. It's all pretty. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but to me, none of that that uh, transponds or transfers into you know what? It's third down and one. Who's, are we going to be able to root some guys out, pick up a yard, and keep this drive alive? And that's the one thing. You know, still close with the, with Jason and and all that. That's that's the one takeaway. I mean, whether it's you're walking on the field through a bar, or you know your your packed facility, you know you got all all the bells and whistles in your locker. Just none of it to me speaks of toughness, which I think you need to have to be a good football team. I'm just picturing that bar, too, as he says that, and I'm just shaking my head in, in, in agreement because I've, I've walked through there a few times. Dale, when uh, yeah. you were uh, with the Raiders, you get traded uh, to the Cowboys back in 1990. What were your thoughts at the time? What, was it like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to Dallas, or oh, my gosh, I'm leaving L.A.? What, what was going through your head? How that whole situation, or how do you remember that whole situation? Well, I tell you what, it's, it's been a fun story for myself and John Giesick. Mm. Uh, who today, till today, are still very close friends. Families are close friends. We vacation together. So um, I was told that I was probably going to be traded. Uh, the Oakland slash Los Angeles Raiders were so secretive. Uh, Art Shell was the coach, called me in, said, you know why you're here? So it wasn't cut down day or anything. I said, I guess I probably got traded. Somebody had tipped me off. Immediately, who told you? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to tell you who told me. What does it matter? Am I traded? Yeah, you're traded. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> and uh, when he but when he said Dallas, this is coming off the 1-15 in 15 year. <laughs> uh, we are training there in, um, and now I'm going to forget where the Cowboys get trained for so many years. Not Thousand Oaks, Oxnard. Yep. Where you get up in the morning, morning practice, boy, you better put some sweats on. It's kind of cool and. And we're reading in the USA Today how Cowboys are practicing in Austin and it's 110. Jimmy and Jerry don't know their head from their rear end. And I remember going, really? The Cowboys? And uh, anyway, so I show up. I lost about 20 pounds the first two practices. Had IVs <laughs> hooked up to me. And I, I forgot what humidity was like. You know, I played it at the Mew. But it's different when you're 20 than when you're 30. And, uh, and then the, 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 the caveat to the story is Jimmy Johnson didn't say a word to me the first, like, three days I was there. Didn't say, hey, welcome, or hey, Dale, or hey, I'm Coke, nothing. And, uh, and I'm walking out to practice one day, and you feel this little presence next to you, and he goes, 
Pelestre. Yeah. He said, tell me about John Giesick. <laughs> and John Giesick, as I was leaving, the Raiders was the last guy to come up. We were pretty good friends. And he said, hey, Dale, it's going to be a great opportunity. Go there, get a chance to play. But he was BSing me. He knew that it sucked to going to Dallas. <laughs> and I looked at Jimmy, and I said, oh, John Giesick? We need him here, this guy. <laughs> he changed things. So, and it's it, two quick things. So three days later, Jimmy trades for him. I get a big bang on my hotel room, and I look out the little people. There's Kiesick with this look of dread on his face. Oh. And I open the door, and I said, Johnny, it's a great opportunity. To which he used some <laughs> very strong words that say he wasn't happy. But guess what? John Giesick's still in Dallas. Every yeah. year he'd say, I can't wait to get out of here. 30 years later, he's still there. How about uh, did you were there long enough with Dallas that you went to Wichita Falls, right? I did go to Wichita Falls, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you want to talk about melting pot. That was a different animal right there than even Austin. But, uh, golly. Dale, if, if in fact, hard knocks, and I don't know how long hard knocks has been around, and there's been documentaries about training camps, but just the Cowboys, I mentioned the personalities, but also there were some that, of course, wanted to enjoy life along the way, and not just in, in ways of, of enjoying life, but enjoying life in a lot of different ways. What would it have been like to be behind the scenes of the 90s Cowboys, especially during those Super Bowl teams? Well, we often talked, number one, there would have been a lot of editing, I would imagine. <laughs> um, and, and number two, we talk about, it's quite often when we get together about the social media thing. Yeah. I mean, you sit there and think about it. Uh, the, some of the things that went on back then, um, you'd be lambasted for today because somebody had a phone, somebody would take a video, somebody. And, um, and so we're thankful that that was not around. I will always say that uh, we were a team that, that uh, that group had a great amount of fun but uh, when it's time to work, uh, I've never been around a harder working group of guys. I had this put, I put up that we were having you on the show on Sikkim 365. I'm going to read this if you don't mind. If you're a good long snapper, you can play a long time in the NFL, and Dell was as good as there was. My cousin in 1992 went on the Tokyo trip with the Cowboys when they went over there to play the Oilers. My sons were five and six at the time, wanted autographs of Emmett and Troy. So I gave him 8 by 10 photos of them and asked if he had a chance to get an autograph. One night, he ended up at a country and western bar in Tokyo with just him, Troy, Dale, and Gogan. Hellestry, of course. And got the autograph from Troy for my two sons. He said those guys were as nice as they could be. Dale was probably Troy's best friend on the team. I know they were roommates. I'm sure he has some great Troy Aikman stories. And do you want me to confirm that I do, or do you want me to tell the story? How, how, Aikman, is, is it true about the Aikman stare if you made mistakes or practice got a little bit out of whack? I know I saw him one time turn around and punt the football backwards in Oxnard or wherever it was when he got frustrated or thought. What, what, what was the Aikman stare like? What did, that, did you get that ever? Um, I would get that during training camp sometimes because uh, Troy was a little baby. <laughs> and he didn't want any sweat on the ball. And so when you snap it to him, you know, it's 105 degrees of 80% humidity. He's like, would you change your pants? I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> it's 105. <laughs> um, but, but when you're talking about, and, and that's why I, we have Michael Irvin on our show quite often. And, and the, the one thing that nobody knows about Michael Irvin I played 17 years with three different NFL teams in college and high school and never been around a harder worker than Michael Irvin. Now, if you say Michael Irvin to the normal fan, they're going to go, oh, you know, kind of a playboy. He was talented. And, but, boy, I like to have a lot of fun. Hardest worker I've been around. Uh, and I think, honestly, looking back on it, what made us so special was Troy, Michael, Emmett, we're not only our three best players, but they were the three hardest workers on our football team. So Troy never demanded anything um, out of anybody else that he didn't demand out of himself. Dale, uh, I, I know that you're a part of it. A lot of former uh, athletes are a part of memo.me. How much have you been able to get involved in that, and how much do people ask you to be involved? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of hoping that the, it's interesting because um, – I it, obviously to me it's a little bit new. 
Um, our, our friend Chris Visser has got me involved mm-hmm. out here in Arizona and, uh, and, and looking forward to getting more and more involved. Um, you know, like I told Chris, I said, come on, how many, how many people are going to, going to want, uh, you know, Dale Hellestray to wish him a happy father's day or whatever. But I will tell you this, I just got back from a Mexican food lunch and some guy came up to me and he said, Hey, would you believe me if I told you that you're my favorite cowboy? And I said, not even for a second. <laughs> so he, knew, he at least knew who I was, you know. But, but, no, I think it's a neat thing. And the more people I talk to, the more people really dig the fact that, hey, you do a video and you, know, you, you make it personal and, and, your friend, uh, and your friend or wife or significant other or whatever just gets a big kick out of it. So I would say, give it a shot. See if you enjoy it. and. Um, and, and have a little fun with it. Well, with Father's Day coming up just around the corner a week from Sunday, it's a great opportunity to get a personalized video, messages from athletes, cele- celebrities, whatever, Hollywood, TV, radio, et cetera, uh, with Memo.me and Dale Hellestray, one of many of the athletes who's involved, as you just heard, uh, with Memo.me. Dale, we appreciate it. Uh, we really do. We enjoy it. I love the insight on the Cowboys now of what you see or what you think. <laughs> And uh, also some mm-hmm. of the great stories of behind the scenes of that great run. Could you ever imagine, and it's kind of part off of this question from earlier, that it would be 26 years. I asked B- Babe Loffenberg this the other day. 26 years since the Cowboys not won a Super Bowl, played in a Super Bowl, but played for a chance to get to a Super Bowl in a championship game. It absolutely blows my mind. And they, it, it, the further away you get away from something, the more you get to appreciate uh, all those things, and it was a, it was just the right mix of guys at the right time. Um, and uh, the more you look back, uh, the more you enjoy it, and uh, we'll always be proud of that. Thank you, Dale. Appreciate it. Great stuff as always. Appreciate your time. Stay in touch, Dale Hellestray, part of Phoenix Radio, has been on. As he said, he was a radio talk show co-host with Mark Tuanay back when they, those Cowboys teams in the 